All right, Reggae Ellis here for Mountain Watch. Well, the Olympic Games are just about to start and one Australian athlete we'll all be watching is snowboarder Tess Cody. Uh, she'll be competing in the slope style and she's had a pretty good run of form uh, leading into the Olympics, of course, uh, X Games performance and also she won the World Cup in Lux just last month. Uh, it's going to be a great uh, event to watch and she'll be definitely in the mix for a medal. And I caught up with Tess just before she headed off to Beijing. All right, Tess Cody, welcome and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Really stoked to be here. Are you from a snow family or was it just sort of holidays and it just sort of evolved into this career? Yeah, it was holidays and it just evolved. Like the first time we went to the snow was just a family holiday um, when I was nine and everyone just wanted to try snowboarding because um, both of my parents knew how to ski. They've been skiing for a long time, but um, we were never like a crazy snow family really until right. the, until then. That would sort of change stuff. But um, um, but yeah, everyone just wanted to try snowboarding and do something fun and different. Like we were sort of looking for a new, I guess, family hobby kind of thing to do. So no, nah, it was it was great. Yeah, it was really cool. Wow, it's pretty cool. Look at the path it set you on now. You know. Yeah, totally. Well, well of course, yeah. You know, as I said earlier, like we staring down the barrel of the next Olympics. Going back to Pyeongchang, um, South Korea, 2018 Olympics, you went into that, only young, 17 years old. Do you remember how you felt when you knew you were actually going to the Olympics? Yeah, it was pretty bizarre. Like, um, I don't know if you know Emily Arthur, she's a really good yeah. friend of mine, but we were sharing a house at the, at the time in Mammoth and we were both, you sort of like get an email kind of thing. Like, I guess you know, but but at the same time, you got to wait until you're really confirmed onto the team and, and you get like an email and stuff like that. Yeah. That we were like, yeah, it was kind of crazy that this is happening. And, and even chatting to her recently, it's like pretty bizarre that it's already been four years kind of thing. But yeah, I was, I was really excited about that one. I was super nervous too. Like, I don't know, it's a big deal. And it's a big deal when you're 17. So yeah. Well, yeah, going back to that morning, as you said, like things have changed a bit now. Um, you know, I suppose in many ways the Olympics are fairly rigid with the TV schedule. Um, going back to that morning in practice run just before the event, yeah, you knuckled a jump and blew your knee out, did your ACL. Can you, like, when the reality hit that you weren't going to ride that day, how'd you feel? Yeah, that was a very, that was a heavy one for sure. <laughs> like, um, I don't know, I definitely knew when I landed that I'd done something not great, but I, I wasn't actually super worried about it straight away because I don't know, like, you know, you overshoot jumps and things hurt, like that just happens. So I wasn't really freaking out about it right at the, at the time. But then when I went to strap in and ride down was when I felt that, yeah, something definitely wasn't right. But yeah, it was pretty, pretty savage, like, just sort of getting checked out and getting told like that I'd done my ACL and you know like a bummer to for sure have to like pull out of the Olympics but um I was sort of more bummed about because like that's a pretty common injury in snowboarding like you hear yeah. about it people do it whatever and like I knew how long it was going to take so that was sort of the part that was definitely a pretty hard pill to swallow but yeah that was tough but I don't know a lot of lessons learned out of that one and these well, kind of things just shape you into the rider that uh, you are. Those, so. I mean, you could look back at me going only 17, start of your career. I mean, but yeah, that what ended up in 12 months off snow. That's a big thing to deal with. I know you went back to school, finished school and things, but how'd you keep working through that, that barrier and mentally how tough was it to sort of focus? Yeah, it was definitely a challenge, but I knew that I had to like, try and come back because yeah those sorts of injuries definitely can define your career like you can be finished or you can really make the most out of it and I just knew that if I didn't try to see if I could get back then like you know you just never know so you might as well just try like I had nothing else it was not like I had some other big career pathway plan kind of thing you know like yeah nothing else to do I might as well have given it my best shot and yeah really glad that I did and like definitely changed a lot of things about the way that I was doing things so I don't know a lot of parts of it I think were a bit of a blessing in disguise for me but yeah everything happens for a reason and um okay like 
we'll, we'll jump ahead there. So then another win that year, was it? And then you had your golden year, I think it's fair to say, not your golden year, but a pretty epic <laughs> one um, last year, 2021. Yeah. Um, yeah, after that, that event that I won was COVID. So we didn't actually have any more events oh, that's right, that yeah. year. Yeah. So well it was kind of cut short. Quick. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, last year was so sick. Like, honestly, I couldn't have asked for a better season. I felt so lucky. And um, yeah, I just had a really great season. I had so much fun, like, despite all the COVID stuff, which was pretty stressful <laughs> during the season. But yeah, I was sort of just trying to take it like, like day by day, event by event, and just have a really good time. And, and I did, and it worked out really well. Yeah, well, I mean, what, what'd you end up doing? You had, what, three World Cup results, third in the World Champs? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it was two, yeah, two World Cup podiums and then World Champs. Yeah. And Audi 9s, yeah. Yeah, and then, of course, and that, that has uh, earned you the invite to this year's, um, well, this month's um, X Games in Aspen. Yeah. And like, you know, the X Games, it's kind of like, you know, you've got to earn your stripes there. It's invite only. Um, you must have been pretty stoked. You know, I can imagine when you were 11 or 12, cruising around <laughs> in the fog at Bull, you would go, you know, thinking, imagine being in the X Games. Well, now you are. Yeah, totally. No, that was pretty crazy. Like, getting the invite in my in my email, I was so stoked. Um, yeah, that's something I've always dreamt of. Like, and it's, like what you said, getting invited, I think is such a special part of it because, you know, World Cups and these sorts of things, you can just go, you don't have to get an invite. But yeah, X Games is so exclusive. There's just a certain, I don't know, it's just pretty sick to get invited and be recognised for sure because it's, it's really the biggest event in snowboarding for us. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And what about here, like in Australia? Yeah, you know, it's sort of like, uh, yeah, I know talking to a lot of sort of, you know, international snow athletes, Australians, it's sort of not so, is it like a downtime or just sort of, you know, rekindle your, you know, just cruise between events, just go snowboarding with friends and have it, but they also have the chance to focus on tricks because obviously, you know, we've got good parks at uh, Threadbow and Parisha. Yeah, um, nah, the Australian thing for me isn't normally really downtime. Like, we still try and train a fair bit and make the most of, what we've got yeah the parks there are pretty sick but it's such a short sort of time frame with the snow and stuff and like eight weeks you're being enough snow and yeah i know exactly and then it's like even shorter than that for like good jumps with enough snow kind of thing so um no nah, we always try and make the most of it and it'll be a real game changer now with the um airbag facility in jindabyne yeah that's going to be that's going to be really great i'm really looking forward to trying that out later in the year but um yeah, I do really enjoy the Australian season. Like, it's a good time to sort of just work on stuff, probably more consolidate tricks than anything. Um, and then, yeah, just hang out with everyone. is It's nice to be able to ride in your home country. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, going into this year, you know, like, it's a big year. I know, like, it's an expensive sport. It's like, you know, obviously not only demanding physically and mentally, you know, as you said, you're away from home so much. You know, sounds glamorous, but, you know, I know hotels can wear pretty thin. <laughs> week in, week out. But um, you've had a fair bit of support this year. Like it's, um, you know, new sponsors with the North Face, Monster, that kind of stuff, you know, Salmon Snowboard. So it's that sort of support. How important is it? So important. Yeah, it honestly means the world to me. Like it's such a big part of um, the sport. I know a lot of sports don't sort of get the sponsorship opportunities that we do, but um, it's so special. And I think more to the point of anything, like with these brands have really found found a home like which is so nice to say it's just the team's great with all the riders just the people um managing the teams and from the companies are all so great but yeah I, I really feel like I lucked out this year just so many people um just I don't know wanting me on the team which really feels really special and it's nice to be appreciated like that but um well, yeah you, I've been the, um... been really you're the top. You you are the number one snowboarder in the country, so they think it's fair enough. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It was just something I like really had to work hard towards, and I think, especially sometimes from like Australia, it's it's it is harder to get those opportunities. Like you yeah. see other kids overseas that 
sort of get get those kind of opportunities a lot quicker and you really got to prove yourself time and time again why you deserve um, the sponsorship and stuff like that, which is cool. Like, it makes you work harder for that stuff. But, yeah, it's same same sort of thing. Like, something I always dreamed of as a Grom and it's really nice to get international brand rec- recognition. And um, But, more, like, on top of that, it's just working with really cool people is yeah, well, my favourite part about it. That does help. It makes your uh, lifestyle and job a little bit more pleasant. And um, yeah. this past year, of course, yeah, it, like, you know, the last winter, uh, with all the lockdowns and things like that, was our know, resorts open, resorts closed. That period when it, um, what, about the 14th of August when they shut down the, all the resorts in New South Wales. Um, but they ended up, Snow Australia ended up organising with Threadbo to have that park and big air built up, up around Anton's. What was that like? Yeah, that was so sick. That was awesome. Um, it was really great that Threadbo were able to get that off the ground because I know that was a really difficult time for everyone. But that was such an insane opportunity. Like the park builders did such an amazing job. We got sled laps, which is always so much fun. And then, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty surreal. Like, I mean, it was such a shame that all the resorts were shut, but we were so, so lucky that we were still able to go up there and ride. Um, yeah, everyone really worked hard to make that one happen. So that was really cool. Yeah, I suppose, I mean, obviously a very important year, prep, you know, preparations for the Olympics. Um, Winter Olympics, like, you know, okay, 2018 happened, you know, major injury that morning of the event. How are you feeling going into um, Beijing? Yeah, definitely feeling good. Like, it was. it's good to have had an Olympic experience under my belt, even though it wasn't wasn't the one that I was hoping for, but yeah, no, I'm feeling good. Like, um, it'll be good to get a couple more events heading into the games, but yeah, I'm excited to get there. I've never been to China, so that should be interesting for sure. But yeah, I think I've grown a lot as a rider and a person, so it'd be good to go and sort of try and step up to the plate. Well, thanks, Tess. Really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and all the best in Beijing. Really looking forward to watching you. Yeah, thanks heaps. Thanks so much for having me.